What is up, you wonderful people? My name is Cody Warner. We're gonna dive right into the 10 most used keyboard shortcuts in Final Cut Pro. I'm gonna be referring to these by my customized keyboard shortcuts, but I have that available for you, free download if you wanna get that down in the description, or if you wanna keep the default commands, which I would recommend against, I'll throw those default commands up on the screen just so you can still follow along. Here we go. You have a brand new project, brand new timeline, and you got some footage you wanna drop it down in. This is actually an Instagram story. I already have some in and out points set in here. I and O is how you set an in and out point. First one. I'm gonna hit E, and that's gonna drop it down into the timeline. The way I remembered this, since it's kind of like learning a new language, E sounds like end, or put the clip on the end. That's what the E key does, okay? Let's throw another one in here. Like I said, I already have these ins and outs set. That one doesn't, okay? So, second thing. Let me hit Command, plus, plus, plus. That's gonna zoom me in my timeline. Same thing with command minus, minus, minus. That's gonna zoom me out. That's, you know, you use that every second of editing. If you're zooming in and out any other way, you're wasting so much time. Trim end is the bracket that's that way. Same thing with trim start. If you come to a point and you're like, actually it needs to start right there, bracket to the left. All that's doing is blading right where your cursor's at and deleting everything to the left or deleting everything to the right. Trim start. Trim end, crucial. Okay, let's get these rotated. I don't use a shortcut for this. 90, and then this needs to be, what, 178? Yeah, it fills it up. I have those attributes. I wanna paste them on all of these clips. So I'm just gonna hit Command C, and then the Paste Attributes command is Command Shift V. It brings up what attributes you wanna paste. You can select or deselect anything. I actually want all of this in this case, but say I didn't want scale, I would just uncheck that and then hit paste. Now we got these right, got them all right. So now they're looking good. Now, I decided I want some sort of transitional clip in between this shot and this shot. If I hit E, it would append that clip to the end. Let me hit Command Z, also obviously very used, but doesn't count because like, Command Z is, is life. Instead of hitting E, I'm gonna position the cursor right where I want the clip to go above, and I'm gonna hit Q. Q puts it on top. So now you have two different ways of putting clips into the timeline with a shortcut. The last thing is W. If I were to hit W, right where the cursor is, it's going to insert that clip. What it did in a magnetic timeline was move everything beyond that just down a bit. Say I hit W, but I had meant to hit Q, I can just select that clip and drag it up wherever I wanted to go. But E, W, and Q are the fast ways to get clips from your browser down into your timeline. Now we've got a bunch of stuff going on down here and we wanna watch it, right? So I'm hitting, I've been hitting spacebar thus far just to hit play, but I don't wanna watch this whole thing at regular speed. What can I do? I can hit L twice to go fast. It's like 2X playback. If I need to pause, I could hit K if your fingers are already there. And then to go backwards, I could hit J, 1X. If I hit J again, we're going at 1.5X. J again, we're going at 3X. All right, so that's how you can kind of navigate play-wise, JKL, they call it JKL editing. And those are keyboard shortcuts for playing around in your timeline. All right, now I obviously don't want this entire clip. I want this to start uh, right as she comes up and starts to to shave that part of it. So I'm gonna navigate the playhead right where it needs to be, and I'm gonna hit that bracket key. But then I want that to keep going, and I know that I need to use another piece of the clip later on, so I don't want to trim end with my back bracket. So I'm gonna hit B, which is gonna just blade the clip right here, and then I'm gonna go back up here and see where I want the next one to start, and that's gonna be right here, so I'm gonna hit trim start. B is the fastest way to blade without having to go up to your blade tool, click it, come back down, click where you wanna. Don't do that, don't do that, just hit B. Similarly, blade all is command B. So if I were to have you know, a bunch of 
B-roll up here on the top and then a bunch of audio down below, but I just needed everything to stop or cut or I needed to move a whole sequence somewhere else in the timeline. If I hit Command B, that's going to blade every single thing that is resting underneath that cursor. Now let's say I hit Command B somewhere in the middle of my timeline, but I didn't actually wanna move the music. I wanted the music to kind of stay there. I'm just moving that whole sequence somewhere else in the timeline. Because I hit Command B, I'll probably just end up stretching that music back out. But what you can see is the anchor point of that music is still at the place where I hit Command B, which is sometimes fine, but sometimes when now I go back and start making edits to the timeline, before that anchor point, now it's moving the music in a way that I don't want it to be moving the music. To change that anchor point, select the music and hit Option Command and then click right there on the music. And that's going to move the anchor point back to the beginning of the song. That's something that I only recently found out about and super easy to remember because, I don't know, it's right next to Spacebar, but Option Command and Click is gonna move an anchor point. I'm not gonna get super deep into compound clips and why you would use them and what they're for and that sort of thing in this video, but if you wanna stick around in the channel, Javier Mercedes and I are doing kind of a more extensive how-to Final Cut versus Premiere Pro, like do what you wanna do in both of them and learn them both, so stick around for that. If I had a compound clip and I don't know the shortcut for that, it's option G. I don't ever name the compound clips because I, uh, I live on the edge. Have my compound clip, I've been editing, but then for whatever reason, I need to get that, I need to get back inside that compound clip, but I don't wanna click into the compound clip because I wanna keep my spot in the timeline. Anyway, shift command G is gonna break that compound clip apart. You do have to remember if you've applied any effect or a limiter or something to the compound clip, then it's, you're no longer gonna have that effect on the clips that you just broke apart. Um, but something I use all the time. All right, let's talk about a little bit of speed ramping. We've got shift B, we've got command R, and we've got command S. Those are the three main tools that I use within speed ramping, retiming, that sort of thing. This is all 60 frames per second, but it's a 24 frame per second timeline. If I hit command S on a clip, it's gonna take the number of frames that I've got, which in this case is 60, and stretch it to 24. So it's basically slowing it down by 40%. If it were 120, it would take it down to 20%. It's just taking those frames and then stretching them to whatever the timeline is set at. But I don't want this entire thing to be slow, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Shift B, and that's gonna create some kind of weird half timing cut. And then now I can either stretch that out, make it slower, or I can bring it a lot faster so I can do some sort of speed ramp. If I hit here, go up to just fast 8x, you could set a command key for that, but I haven't. Then we have a very fast beginning and then it slows down, but it does it in a way that is like more of a curvy way as opposed to just a jump cut uh, fast slow way. Command R is just gonna toggle between showing that retiming and not showing the retiming. So let's say instead of wanting to go the whole way down to 40%, I just wanted to bring that down to 80%. Then I can click on this and slide it over to 80, or I can click on the down arrow and go to custom once I've used Command R to bring up that retime. Hope you're fast, hope you're fun, hope you're doing great. I missed you, I missed you. Stick around, see you later.